This is a trailer dolly, and a very light in trailer dolly. I bought it at a uh, at a big box store, aka the China Mart, and um, I must say it uh, it's not very good quality at all. Uh, if you're moving a lightweight trailer, that's awesome. It'll it'll move it around. Uh, I would say basically anything that you can pick up one handed on the tongue, uh, this would work well for. Uh, anything heavier than that, uh, it's just not going to cut it. Some of the major issues are the holes that these bolts go into are way oversized for the bolts they give you. So no matter how hard you tighten it down, you get slop in, in pieces and parts. The holes are misaligned uh, that they drilled at the factory. Uh, I could barely get one, one cotter pin in. I don't know if it was this side or the other side. Um, it was just drilled wrong. Um, it's very poorly de-engineered. Great for light objects, not very good for a heavy trailer. But uh, we're going to cut this thing up and do something really cool with it. Basically, with the few parts that we can use, we're going to make this. And this is a motorized trailer wheel. Some people call them a motorized uh, trailer jockey. Uh, but it'll allow me to move a large trailer um, with very little effort. Because the motor that you can see in the picture is going to push it along. And all I'll have to do is guide it using the handles on top. We're going to use this to power the trailer mule. And if you go back and you look at some of my videos, you'll see one of them is a review on Harbor Freight winches. And this particular winch destroyed itself, so it's a perfect candidate to use this particular motor. And I'm going to use the spool, and we're going to remove this end of the spool. You can see I've already done that. Uh, and we'll take this piece off, and basically we're, we're going to bolt a sprocket to the bottom half of the spool. And we're going to get a chain, and the chain is what's going to drive this unit. Um, pretty simple. It just kind of come apart and, and once you get this off, I used the plasma torch to cut it and grinded the rest off. Um, we'll just bolt a sprocket to the end of it. Once it's bolted together, it looks like this and uh, your chain is going to ride on the sprocket obviously. But you want to make sure you put your handle back on the end so you can pull this out and free spin it and shove this cart around when you're not using the, uh, the electric motor. I'm not going to do a detailed build on this. Uh, pretty much, if you're into building these types of things on your own, you, you probably don't need a step-by-step -step instruction. You're just looking at other people's videos for ideas. At least that's what I do. Uh, it is pretty self-explanatory to the person that does this type of thing on their own. But I do want to mention a few key things that I did that make sense that somebody probably wouldn't notice unless it was explained. So the first thing is I wanted all the weight to be on these front wheels, at least all the way to the trailer. But you didn't want to be in front of the axle because you have a possibility of this thing tipping. So I put it just a little bit behind the axle so that the uh, most of the weight's right here, which is where you want it. And it's not forward enough that it's going to tip. Uh, the back wheels are not taking very much load at all, basically the weight of the contraption itself. Um, the Harbor Freight winch proved to be very nice. It's the right speed. Um, I'll try to see if I can find a count on these teeth and put it in a description. Uh, I don't think I'd change that at all. Uh, I did weld the ball at the top. It was just kind of quick and dirty. The whole build was kind of quick and dirty. Um, in fact, you can see my welds aren't very pretty. I had wet welding rods and really didn't want to run to the store and replace them. So it's not as pretty as it could be, but it works very well, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, basically, the wheels are the wheels that came with the Harbor Freight kit. Um, I welded the sprocket in the center, as I said earlier, and it's just a 5 8 all thread rod through the center, so pretty simple. Um, just a straight angle iron you can buy in the store, and it's just like a piece of quarter-inch stock that I had laying around in the scrap. Uh, I welded the casters to it. Uh, that was something else. I was going to kind of do like a um, like a wagon style with the handle, so that when you, when you move the handle, the wheels would move. Uh, but um, I tried these casters, and it works really well. You can spin this thing around with a trailer on it, and it does just fine. So I don't think I go to all the work to change that. I think, think what I have here seems to work pretty well. I didn't want to invest in a battery to put on this thing to basically have it die every year because I don't use it that much. So uh, I figure I'm going to use this thing maybe once or twice a year. So it seemed like a good idea to use the jump pack uh, to power it, and that's proven to be a pretty decent option. Um, I basically made the, the pan here just wide enough to fit the base of a jump pack, at least my jump pack. Um, I actually prefer these jump packs. They work very well. I'll put a link in the description. But if you don't have a good jump pack, this is the one you want. Uh, I've jumped RVs on this and diesel trucks, and it, it does a great job. You pay a little more, but it's well worth it. Uh, but basically, I just kind of hang it on a, on a um, I don't know, it's a shovel hook. It's something you would find in Lowe's or Home Depot. I just welded it to the handle uh, so this thing just hang on that. Um, I did leave the remote on there. 
It seems kind of silly, but if you think about it, you might be backing this thing up into the back of the garage or moving your boat into the back of the garage and you want to stand next to the garage in a trailer uh, to watch it. So it kind of made sense that you'd just be able to kind of bump it in. I left the release handle on there because as you know, you pull these out and turn them a little bit and then the spool just spins free. And I thought, well, probably you might want to move this thing around on its own and position it without using the motor and using up your battery. For now, I just kind of have the uh, the power leads of the winch just clipped onto the power pack. Uh, I, what I'm going to do, if you watch my upcoming videos, you're going to see one of them that is uh, using HDPE plastic. And so I'm going to mount some uh, plastic isolated studs uh, somewhere on this handle or somewhere on this unit. Uh, so you can just clip the leads on them uh, and power it with that. Just to give you an idea how fast it is, I thought I'd just uh, record it going by, so to speak. Uh, and you can see it's not too fast, not too slow. Let's go the other direction. And I am using a remote to control it. That's all there is to this build. It's pretty straightforward and pretty simple for the average do-it-yourselfer. Shouldn't take any more than a weekend. Like and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see other projects being built. If you're like me, you need ideas, and it's always fun to see what somebody else is building in their own garage.